Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be showing you how to teach yourself Premiere Pro scripting. Now this is something not a lot of people know in general, so today I thought I would teach you a bit about how I learned and how you can learn yourself. So we're going to be going over things like resources you can use to learn, as well as things during the development process you can do, and things beyond that, such as sharing with others the forums and other useful resources. So let's go ahead and get started and look at some of the documentation that can help us learn how to script. So the main documentation for Premiere scripting is within ExtendScript itself. You need to make sure you have at least some version of Premiere Pro CC 2017 or above installed. And once you launch uh, ExtendScript, you can go to Help and the Object Model Viewer. This is going to load up a window where we can go down to the browser and switch from the core JavaScript classes and find our version of Premiere. You can see I have 2017 and 2018 available to see here. So I can click on one of them and it's now going to bring up the object model for how everything works. Essentially, this is a rundown or a hierarchy model of everything from the application of Premiere itself all the way down to the timeline, the tracks, the effects, etc. Of course, there are some limitations with Premiere scripting compared to Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, or After Effects scripting but there is still a ton you can do and plenty being added with every new version. So plenty of the documentation is in here where you can say look at the application of Premiere and the properties we have access to like where it's at, where the build is, some of the properties, the version, and then we also have things we can do such as setting timeout, setting where the scratch disks are. So we have options to read data from things like the name of the project or the track or whatever, all the way to things like manipulating it, such as importing footage, uh, adjusting the length of a clip or things like that. Another thing that most people don't seem to be aware of is the data browser built into ExtendScript. This is the main reason I use ExtendScript over any other scripting uh, platform or code writing thing, because we have this data browser which has all the object models built in. So even though we don't have that much documentation for Premiere, we sort of have documentation that generates itself when we write code. So if I make sure I have my script here connected, this is just a script that uh, generates a mosaic effect on the first clip here. If I run this script and I have a bunch of variables like my project, my track, etc., they're actually going to appear inside of the data browser and I can see things like properties and methods for each of them. So if you don't see this, just make sure you have window and the data browser visible. So for example, we have the project. So if I scroll down and find our project variable, you can see it's an object of pro type project. So I can scroll down here and see all the properties and methods of our project. This will allow me to go in and further learn what I can do to this project, which is app.project. What can I do to my project? Well, I can add a property. I can refer to the active sequence inside of it. I can close it, I can create a new sequence, delete a sequence, and the list goes on and on and on. And you can even continue to drop down and see what other properties and methods go down as you go levels deeper. So I really don't know why people don't really discuss this feature, but I use the data browser all the time to discover new things in scripting. Uh, another quick tip, which some of you more advanced users may not be aware of, is you can learn a lot of useful QE which is a special thing inside of Premiere Pro that developers use. Uh, you can see a lot of the QE methods by going into the QE object I've created. And you can see we have constructors um, and things like getting the sequence presets. And trust me, if you just dive into this object here, you can find a lot and a lot of useful things. That's where I found this get video effect by name, get video track at, and get item at. And these are all things built into QE which you can see inside the data browser. Sorry if that was a bit of a rant, but I do really like the data browser and no one ever talks about it despite the fact it has all of the information you need to debug and troubleshoot code. The last thing you can do resource wise is to look at other code. There's not a lot of Premiere extensions out there, but if you do install some, you can go in as always and look at their code. So you can go into your extensions folder and find the extension that is built in. And essentially from there, you can go in and find the JavaScript extended file. And then you can sort of look at the code and source things from there. There's not a lot of Premiere extensions out though, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to reference other code as well. 
The next main thing is development. This is mostly something that comes down to practice and experience, but you just have to code, 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 and practice, practice, practice to get more familiar with the language as well as be more comfortable writing code off the top of your head without referencing guides or whatever. Because I think the fastest way to really learn development is to connect it directly to Premiere and just start grinding away learning things. So, you know, you start with a variable for your project, you check whether that works or not by saying, let's write the line, our project name, or you can say alert the project name. And it's just like going step by step, writing a couple lines of code, making sure your variable really refers to the project or whatever you think it is. And then moving on to the next line. Is this really gonna be our active sequence called black video? Well, let's check what's our sequence name. And then just move on to the next line and keep working incrementally step by step until you reach that goal that you're looking for with your script. The way I basically started learning any scripting language is by just writing a couple lines of code, running it directly into the program, checking if I'm getting the right information, going back into my code. If I get an error, I need to fix it and then move on to the next line and just take it step by step until I reach the final destination. I would highly recommend against writing and learning code uh, for Premiere inside of extensions because although extensions are one of the widely most used ways to script in Premiere, it's actually really difficult to debug and learn what's wrong because with an extension, you have to connect it to a bunch of other code such as uh, HTML and JavaScript. And that just adds a whole nother level of complexity that can really slow down your scripting learning process. And another thing I could recommend, which I've been doing recently, is since Premiere scripting is becoming much more prevalent and getting more and more features, one thing to do to learn better is to challenge yourself to take an After Effects script, which typically will have a lot more functionality, and turn it into a Premiere Pro script. You may have noticed based on my videos that I've done things like adding effects, which is pretty simple, but why not go for something more complicated, like creating a slideshow in Premiere with a script, or something even more complicated that seems like it'd only be possible in After Effects. That's one thing that will force you to get creative and push past the limitations of what you thought were possible, and you'll usually find a way around it and learn a lot along the way. And lastly, the thing I'm gonna talk about is sharing and teaching with the community. The Premiere Pro scripting community or the scripting community in general is really small and there's only a few of us that are actually teaching it or putting tools together to help people learn. So if you are into it and you have gotten better at it and you think you've learned a few things that haven't been discussed or you just wanna you know, create a PDF document or share some code, be our guest and uh, help the community. I do post some code on GitHub and that's one place you can share code and give it to people for free. Um, it's also a place you can collaborate with others to help develop and learn together. You can also visit the Adobe forums or uh, there's other forums on GitHub as well for the specific repositories where people discuss issues uh, with scripts and uh, plugins and other things like that. And the last way to share which will help you learn is to just teach. Whether you're making a PDF document that has a bunch of useful effects and methods for Premiere scripting, or you start a YouTube channel where you post videos teaching people how to script uh, for Premiere, uh, anything will really help at this point because there's only basically me and a channel called Premiere OnScript creating scripting tutorials. So we really can use all the help we can get in this community. Let's grow it together. And by teaching yourself and teaching others, and we'll develop Premiere Pro scripting to be just as powerful as scripting for After Effects or any of the other Adobe programs. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Those are my best tips I can give you on how to teach yourself Premiere scripting. It all comes down to practice, looking at the resources, and sharing and teaching others. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to be notified of when new uploads are coming out. Thanks again for watching this video guys, and we'll see you next time.